How did we begin this? How did we even meet? I literally saw uh, Mary, yeah. Mary's post of her transformation and her tribute to you. And I was like, all right, I'll send him a message. And I was like, I don't even know what this guy does. Is he even qualified? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Let's see. Like, I was so skeptical and I knew that Ooh. you were interstate as well. And I was like, that's going to be hard because it's going to be over the internet. Like, I was skeptical. I was like, I've never done anything like this before. Yeah. Like, telling my whole life story to someone who I've never met on the internet. It sounds kind of crazy. But I was like, I just got to try it because I tried everything else. Okay, well, that's a good point. What did you try, as I pull up our message, what did you try before seeing me? Um, GP multiple times, <laughs> the, um, like celiac testing, IBS, everything else related to the gut, being told it's fine, it'll go away. Skin issues, been seeing all the different types of, t- t- bleh, different types of docs- doctors. Um, and... Yeah, what else did I try? I mean, I was in a really stressful situation because I'd just finished uni and started a new job, moved out of home, moved house for the first time ever in my whole life, and what's the other thing? I don't know, maybe finishing uni and starting a job was a different thing. But anyway, my life changed. Like, I was, it was very different to what I was used to. And then I started my first job, I had my wisdom teeth out, I got COVID, Mm. I was getting sick all the time, and I was just not well. And yeah, that's when I'd been to the GP, basically just didn't really get any answers, any support. He just said, I don't really know. Doesn't look like anything, you're probably fine. And what were you just- that made me think, I'm just making this all up. Really? Like I in your head. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like I'm going crazy. There's nothing wrong with me, but I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> what were you feeling at the time? What were the symptoms you had? So uh, I was feeling like like an uh, I don't know if imposter syndrome is a good way to s- describe it. Like I was going through all this pain and all this anxiety, all this depression, all this like um, exhaustion and everyone was telling me like oh you're fine Mm -hmm. like you're all good there's nothing wrong so it was like yeah two two different voices in my head like do I take this further or do I just this is this just life and I just have to learn how to cope with it is this what life is meant to feel like and I was so close to and I had to did accept that for many years like this is just what life is like for everyone, or for me at least. I just have to learn to deal with it. But then, yeah. I was feeling spontaneous one day. (laughs) That's your message. (laughs) And yeah. (laughs) So you thought, you thought you were gonna have to live with it. Mm. Do you think about that if you just accepted that? Yeah. Well, I did for so many years. You did? And it was just normal, like life was just a struggle every day. And I thought that was just normal. Like everyone complains about how tired they are and how stressed they are. And that's just normal. That's how everyone lives. When did you discover that not to be true anymore? When I was like coming home, I was so exhausted. I just couldn't even function. I just knew something was not right. Like, I had, didn't have energy for my friends or my family or my partner. And I just, like, go to work and come home and just collapse. Like, there's nothing left. So, yeah. And do you know the first messages? It was, it was, it was March 30th. Wow, that's, like, almost yeah. exactly a year. Almost to the day. Okay. <laughs> do you know what the first message was? I messaged you. Ah. Oh. Because I, yeah. Because you followed me. I followed I just you. wanted to reach out. I've been doing that. Yeah. Uh, and I just said, if you've got any questions, you know, let me know the door's open. And I was like, this guy's just a bot. This is like an automatic message. Oh, that's what you thought. 
<laughs> really? I said, hey, Bree, they just want to reach out, say if there's anything you need or any questions you have on training, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this, open. This, this, send this message to every new follower. <laughs> like, I'm no one special. But I did reply, didn't I? You did reply? Yeah. You said, <laughs> Help. <"Hey." laughs> Thanks for the message. I've been having gut issues for like seven years. I forgot how long. Because mm. you're, wait, how old are you? At 25? I'm 24. 24. Yeah. So through high school. Everything. Seven plus years, it's got really bad, but I don't know who I can help. My GP always blows it off, so I saw a naturopath, so I'm trying some supplements she gave me, and it's only been a week, but it's not helped yet. I'm considering maybe seeing a gastroenterologist. What are your qualifications? Because mm. you want to know, what do I do? Yeah. I'd never heard of an online coach before. Really? Like, what is this? What is? What do they even do? Oh, so, wow. yeah, I had I'm no s- idea. I really I take that for granted. Skeptical. As yeah. you should be. Yeah. Right? It's something new. Yeah. It's a different field. Mm-hmm. What is this? Toucan looking... Right? And then you sent me symptoms. Uh-huh. You know what you said? Alright, let's go. There's a long list. <laughs> Bloating inf- inflammation, sore and puffy belly all the time, but feels like whole body is puffy. Hey, I'm not gonna read this, you read this. God. Thank you for not reading that. <laughs> mm-hmm. What else does it say? I'm just gonna skip over some of it. Okay. Psoriasis on my hands and Toenails, brain fog, forgetfulness, anxiety, depression, oops, fatigue, trouble with weight loss and muscle growth, lack of libido, mood swings, extreme emotions, want to get off the pill. Yeah. But had no idea how. Yes, that's a lot. I responded with some long messages. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking at this point? What was I thinking? Yeah, like I'm responding with this long message, thanks for taking the time. And then I start sending a bunch of voice messages. And do you think I'm a robot by now? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I sent a lot. Yeah, at this point, I just like, I want to help. Yeah, and that was the moment I was like, okay, he actually wants to help me. Yeah. I'll go through with it. And then we, we booked a call. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Crazy. And then, like, just a few messages later. Yeah. Is like that. Uh-huh. Is the... the, the the change. Mm-hmm. When did you, when did you make the decision that you just finally wanted to make a change and just go with it? Yeah, I guess it was seeing how um, invested you were becoming with my situation. You were asking questions and you were showing genuine interest and. In, like you actually wanted to get to the bottom of it. Mm. Whereas like all the GPs I saw, you know, they'd take one test and be like, it's okay, you're fine. And just draw that conclusion and that's it. So yeah, having, yeah, I was surprised when you, when you sent all those voice messages, I was like, wow, this guy actually wants to know more. Mm. Yeah. So I kind of had to go through with it. I would be stupid not to. And also seeing like transformations that you were sharing from yeah. other people at that time as I saw that it is possible and people have done it before. Did you even think it was possible before us meeting? No. Not at all. <sighs> I didn't want to. Like part of me obviously because I did go through with it, but part of me also was like this could just be it. This is just That's that's, that's sad to me. Yeah that you almost walked down that path for the rest of your time. But you didn't. Mm -hmm. And then what was your first impressions of me and our process? Shocked that you put so much time and effort into my situation. Like I just, it it was, I just, because I had no idea what you did. Like (laughs) what, what your services included. Like I just wasn't, didn't know what to expect. And when you, was so invested and so curious and so like supportive. I was like shocked and not in a bad way, obviously. Just surprised and Mm. just like, yeah, I had hope. You had hope. Mm. Because you would have never experienced something like that before. Mm. These doctors ain't gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Gastros ain't gonna do that. Agipath ain't really gonna do that. They're just going to give me more antibiotics and stuff that really actually were doing more harm than good. 
So then we began, and I want, I need to bring up, and you need to reflect on this, is there was a time earlier on where I remember you telling me, I don't know if there was doubt or there was an impatience, and I was like, I'm not there yet. It's, it's not working. Did you have those feelings? Can you remind me? Like, earlier on? Through. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It, it was a slow process, and like, I think one of the first things we did was start all the supplements and, um, yeah, all the tracking, um, everything like that, and I just kind of wasn't really sure why I was doing it. I just wasn't sure yet. The supplements I was a bit, I didn't know enough about, so I was like, oh, what's this going to do? Like, this one little pill isn't going to solve all my problems, but I'll take it anyway. Mm. Yeah, it's just, it was frustrating that it was so slow, but now looking back, it wasn't that slow. It was actually quite quick on the scale of how long I was experiencing the symptoms for. Seven years. Yeah. One year later. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, if you were to go back and tell young Bree, because I think through every story, you can inspire other people. Mm-hmm. You go back and tell young Bree, and you go meet her at that point. Mm-hmm. What do you tell her? Because she might be thinking of stopping. Yeah. Maybe you were. Yeah. So, what do you tell her? Just keep going. Why? It, yeah, it. It's going quicker than you think, and you're making progress that you don't even know you're making. Yeah. Like what happened, and you just look back one day, and everything's different, and you didn't even realize how much progress you made. What could we were talking with Dylan? When, yeah. when did you have that moment? I don't actually know that. Um. With Dylan. I think our trip to Melbourne October last year yeah. was the start of that moment, and then, yeah, I guess. Um, from maybe October to December last year, it was, I, I kind of just flipped a switch and yeah, I think because I just, I had some results and I was feeling better and comparing the, the tracking, like the data from back then to now, it was like, okay have made progress, I am feeling better, Mm -hmm. let's do more. So I was starting to run and I started to train, I began my program Mm -hmm. and started exercising properly because that's something I actually didn't do for a long time with you was I wasn't training properly Mm -hmm. because I was really struggling coming back from COVID and everything else. So, and then coming to see you for the workshop, that was when I was like, okay, time to train, let's do it, let's get into it. Wow. Yeah, get me my program, and, <laughs> and then uh, I'll start running. Um, and then I did my deficit. Oh yeah, and that was that helped a lot because yeah, yeah. I just had my gut had more time to recover because I wasn't eating so frequently. Absolutely. That was a big thing for me. Was eating less frequently, and. I just completely forgot Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. because we focus on gut, Mm -hmm. mental health, but you started, I'm going to have a look. What does it say? The heaviest you were was what? Like 66. 65, 66. Mm -hmm. What are we now? Uh, 48. 48. (laughs) Are you still recording? Uh, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. You can use this forever. Thank you. I was going to ask you about that. You absolutely can. I'm just in the habit. I'd love things. you to. Yeah. I'd encourage you to. And, and if you ever want, you can duplicate the tracker and you can create a new. And to change the year, you just do that. Oh, cool. Right? So there you go. Uh, 48 mm-hmm. from 65, 66. Was that 17 kilos? I don't do math. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Am I tripping? It is. It is. Do you understand how much weight that is? Yeah. I didn't even really <laughs> know you had that much on you. Yeah. I looked at you, I'm like, all right, it's like petite yeah. girl, like, okay, you know, it's fine. Yeah. 
When we go to the gym later, mm-hmm. you're gonna pick up a 20 kilo plate and you're gonna say, you lost that, I'm gonna do that with you later. Okay. Oh my God. Are you gonna still keep going? Nah. Okay. Nah. I, I'm sick of it. Going back. <laughs> Diet fatigue is hitting. Going back to the maintenance yeah. like yeah. we talked about. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy where I am. Yeah, you should be losing 18 kilos and that obviously helping your deficit. Yeah. Uh, but when we started, if we go to gut, we measured down. We didn't even call it depression because I didn't want yeah. that language. Yep. Down, anxiety, energy, gassiness, bloating. Mm-hmm. And this we did a scale of 1 to 5 actually to start with. Oh, yeah. Right? If you remember. It yeah. wasn't a scale of 1 to 10. Yeah. And then still high. Mm-hmm. Then we did scale of 1 to 10. Still high, but maybe seeing some preview every now and again. Yeah. And then what was the biggest challenges during this time? The biggest obstacles? Stomach ulcers. Mm. Uh, I think that was a combination of high stress and not dealing with it. Yep. And antibiotics because I had had my wisdom teeth out and I was taking strong painkillers for that and antibiotics. And then, um, yeah, so a combination of that and yeah, just not taking care of my gut and my health. So, yeah, that took. That was that was hard, and I didn't know what it was, and then I didn't know if it was even related to the symptoms I was feeling before the ulcers. I don't know. I think it's all related in some way. But, yeah, that was the hardest thing, and it took a lot to recover from that. But as soon as that happened, though, I was like, I've got to change a lot. Like, I'm not letting that happen again. So... Not letting what happen again? Not letting myself get that stressed and sick. And I'm oh, sorry, I shouldn't say sick. <laughs> I'm not saying I was sick. I'm not right now. That's right. <laughs> Man, very good. Very good. Um, well done. Where was I going with that? Um, yeah, I'm not going to let that happen again. So make some changes. So coming off the pill was a big one. And yeah, not using antibiotics and. Um, anti-inflammatory medication yeah. as well, which I haven't used since then at all. Um, yeah, it was definitely the biggest challenge. And it was like a pivotal moment as well because it was like extreme pain. Like, not just because the, the gut and the bloating and everything that was that I experienced for years, that was tolerable to an extent because I had gone through it for so long. I lived through it. But then the stomach ulcers was like, holy shit, I'm in hospital right now. Like, it feels like my stomach is being ripped apart. And, like, that's that was extreme. So, yeah. Yeah, obviously didn't want to let that happen again. So, yeah. It was a powerful motivator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. To not, to not repeat those behaviours. Mm-hmm. But you made it out. And then... What were the biggest things? So you, you said you summarized the biggest things that had the biggest influence. Getting off the pill, mm-hmm. fixing the stomach ulcers. Mm-hmm. What else? Changing my circle of friendship. Uh, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Um, changing frequency of eating yeah. as well and what I was eating. Um tried low FODMAP for a while and trying different things, even if it feels like it's not working. Supplements, sleep. We did, uh, we mapped it out. We had a, we did a nice little drawing for me once. Do you remember that? Did I draw it on the pad? Yeah. Do you have it? Of course. I have everything. (laughs) Oh, look. Oh yeah, habits like cold shower, um, sunlight. Yeah. Uh, what else? Like the identity change. Yeah. Pill training. Yeah, so I started training properly. Keep talking. Yeah. Um, deep breathing. <laughs> is a big thing. Sleep, nutrition and social so yeah it's a lot mm-hmm. it is 
What do you think back? It's like a completely different person. Like I never would have done any of that on my own. And now I'm just much more open to new things. Like when you first suggested cold showers, I was like, fuck no. <laughs> nah, not happening. <laughs> but now I like can't live without them. Like all the time. I feel like shit if I don't have a cold shower. <laughs> like that's a different person. Yeah. I'm just more open-minded now, like, yeah, past me, yeah, there was so much wrong, but I was not willing to try new things on my own. So having someone external who knew what they were talking about and who didn't have any context of anything else in my life mm. supporting me, yeah, and you helped me see that it, it was doing it just for me and not for the benefit of anyone else, just mm. for me. And for my whole life and my future. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that's, that's one thing I noticed has changed about you. I don't I don't know if you realize, like, on this list, like, I would say it attaches to social. Because mm-hmm. um, I haven't had such a well, one long conversation or in-person conversation yeah. with you. You know, do you realize that you are so much more confident? I do. Your ability to communicate yeah. Yeah. is tenfold. Yeah. Do you see this? Yeah. Like... I know. It, you um, should see me at work. <laughs> what's it like? Uh, yeah, I used to be terrified of, like, my like my bosses and anyone else at work because I'm the youngest person in my workplace and I'm the most qualified. So I always used to feel, like, yeah. a lot of pressure. Well, and was that what you meant by imposter syndrome? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so I was just terrified to talk to anyone and, like, always felt like people were judging me in the way I was doing things and making comments about me behind my back and everything. Like, just always so anxious at work. But now I do feel like I can talk to anyone and people respect me and respect my ideas. And, yeah, like my boss literally said the other day, you're so chill, Brie. You're relaxed, like, what's going on? It's <laughs> like, well. me? Chill? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she actually, yeah, she said she noticed a big difference, which was really nice to hear, because she made me cry once. <laughs> oh, yeah, for, for not good things, like, for... <laughs> Just... Not out of compliments. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I won't go there. <laughs> That's fine, because you're not the same so, yeah. person as yeah, you were right then. Yeah, That's, exactly. It's not as relevant. Yeah. Uh, I'm not scared of people at work anymore. I'm I'm confident and I know that I am making a, a big impact in my workplace and I'm doing a good job and I'm helping other people and yeah, I'm doing my job and I'm doing it well without letting it consume my life and letting myself get stressed out like I used to be. It's not a stressful job like it used to be. It's actually a really fun job. That's... What? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. I don't... When you came to me, you were saying the opposite. Yeah. I was like, I want to quit. Yeah, I was like, you were in the wrong field. Mm. Yeah. You told me to... Yeah. You told uh, me that's to, how it was sounding. You told me to move overseas and <laughs> not do anything. <laughs> just, like, be at the top of a mountain like a monk and just, like, <laughs> chill. But now you are chill. Yeah. There's many ways to get to that. Yeah. And you got to it by still staying in your work. But how did you... Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm interested because we did mindset, a lot of mindset and psychology stuff, but mm-hmm. changing that is quite difficult. You know, the gut, the training, the body, lo- the body weight loss, mm-hmm. like in some ways it's simpler, but the psychology of social and connection and confidence and communication. Like when I got on the phone with you in our first check-ins... You didn't give me much. Yeah. You you seemed sad. Yeah. I was, like I felt for you like like you were like one of those one of my like like uh, people I've worked with. I was like man, I like I honestly in the beginning stages I felt like <sighs> like I don't know if I'm doing enough for, like what like what like I'm, I was really thinking about like how I can help you like it was taking mental space outside of our time together. Because I was really feeling for how challenging your life was and how you were like suffering and how you were just feeling like every week and every day. And I was like, mm-hmm. maybe I not felt imposter syndrome. Man, that'd be funny if I did. And like a version of it was like, mm-hmm. fuck. 
I gotta, I gotta, we gotta do it. I gotta like fix it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta help it. Like, it's too much not to. So like, I felt definitely a version when we started, if I'm being honest, of like, it's gonna be hard. Mm -hmm. But I always stayed persistent. Yeah. Showing up every week to make sure like, I think we can, we can get here. Just we gotta stick at it. And we did. Mm -hmm. And then we're here. A year later. But that mindset stuff, the social connection stuff, is so different, like I said in the beginning. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I was trying to say you were, yeah. you were sad yeah. and down. And you barely expressed like emotion, like in a, in a ha like happiness or joy, smiled, laughed. Yeah. And then I started noticing, mm -hmm. you started to smile a bit more. You might crack a joke here or there. <laughs> you might do this, right? And you were like, what, what are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, <laughs> who's this Brie? <laughs> this, this ain't the same one. <laughs> How did you change that? How did we change it? Just everything compounding, like something yeah. you said, I think in the first initial consult was that everything we do is a small little piece of the puzzle and it's not all going to come together at the same time, but eventually it'll all be connected and all be together. So everything that I thought wasn't making a difference was still adding to the puzzle, only a little bit, but then a little bit more at a time. And then all of a sudden it's done. So that's it. It's pieces of the puzzle. And there was a lot of puzzle pieces in the beginning. Yeah. And that was... Was that overwhelming for you in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, like, it wasn't overwhelming for me, but it was... How should I say? I recognized there was a lot. Meaning I put a lot of pressure on myself to be responsible for putting those pieces back together, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did. And I'm glad you did in your own way too. But what you're saying is that it wasn't any single one moment. Mm -hmm. It was the build-up of many moments yeah. and puzzle pieces. Yeah. What are you most proud about yourself over this last year and how you've changed? I think, like you said, just being able to be more confident and open-minded and social and just be able to not take life so seriously and yeah. like not everything is hard like life is not hard especially my life like, like I don't, relatively i don't have kids yeah i don't work shift work i don't have like my life is so easy <laughs> do you remember when we had that conversation i don't know like, I put this video of me dancing, being silly on yeah, social media. Yeah. And then we talked yeah. about being serious. Yeah. And you said, what did you say? Um, I think at that moment I was finding it hard, but mm. I wanted that mm. really bad. So. I almost remember you were like, you were finding it hard, like you said, and you, you didn't know how to not be serious and like mm. experience that joy. Yeah. But how do you feel now? Yeah, it's just so much easier. Oh. I think putting myself in situations that were uncomfortable, like even just initiating the coaching yeah, in general, sure. but yeah. also cold showers and like training, going back into training after having so much time off and cutting off my friends, mm -hmm. going off the pill, yeah. all these things that I really didn't want to do, I didn't know how, I was uncomfortable, have just made me realize like, Okay, my day-to-day -day life is not as hard as I thought it was. No. It's not. But you had to learn that over yeah. time. Yeah. So now what? What's, what's next on your mind as we close this chapter and you run off into the field? <laughs> right? Like imagine like Homer Simpson <laughs> running through the field. Do, 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 do. Um, what will you do with this newfound person and identity that you have? I think I've got a lot of goals at work 
work-related goals. That so you can be more achieve. ambitious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also just enjoy this life and just enjoy mm -hmm. being able to train, being able to run, being able to eat nutritious food mm -hmm. and just, yeah, just not be stressed and enjoy. And then... That's for right now, that's my goal. And also, yeah, just continue these habits on my own without you checking mm -hmm. on me every mm -hmm. week and keeping myself accountable for it. Um, that would be, I thought it would be a challenge, but I'm confident now that I will be able to do it. You will. And um, yeah, just keeping myself healthy so that in the future, something like this doesn't happen again. Right. Yeah. Because you have the tools, the puzzle pieces, the mm -hmm. knowledge, the wisdom. Yeah. The Prevent experience. Prevent that from even happening in the first place and not have to get to that stage and then, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And there will be obstacles, mm -hmm. of course, but you'll have tools ready. Yeah. So enjoyment, being or uh, being more ambitious, allowing yourself and having more energy to be ambitious. Mm -hmm. And maintaining and teaching yourself that you can be accountable with yourself based on all the things you've learned. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Relieved. Relieved? Yeah. About what? Just, I did it. I'm, I'm here now and I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Well done. Thanks. How do you feel? <sighs> Not many people ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've done what I'm supposed to do. I feel like I've served my purpose. I feel like I've done, you see when I say I've done my job, I don't, this is not a job. I mean like when I say I've done my job, like I've done my job as in like I've done what I needed to do. But to, you've gone above and beyond your job. Yes. I'm always mm -hmm. over deliver. I mean that's why we're here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Flying over from Adelaide. <laughs> Uh, what I mean is that I've done like my human job like contributed and ha helped ease someone's burden and suffering and pain and put them on and change the trajectory of their life mm -hmm. that, that's I mean it's what I know you didn't say those words so I won't mm -hmm. put words in your mouth but that's what I feel like happened mm -hmm. for sure uh, so when I said done my job of like I've lived up to my highest purpose yeah. and fulfillment yeah. and uh, meaning in life every time I go through this process with somebody. Mm -hmm. So I guess I feel uh, content yeah. and at peace. Yeah. That it doesn't matter what happens tomorrow with anything in my life. Because mm -hmm. I've helped you. And people like you, like change theirs and change the people around them. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also what I want to do as a teacher mm. with my students is change the trajectory of their lives and yeah. help them. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. And what's so good is that with this newfound identity, lessons, habits, knowledge, you have so much more to give them. I'm their coach. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever said that out loud? No. But I like it because you're my coach, but I did the work. Yes. So Mr. I'm Guy. their coach, but they have to do the work. Yes. I'm not just telling them what to do. It's not me just feeding them information. It's helping them to make their own decisions. I think of it like a, a Sherpa guiding someone up Mount Everest. 
you know? Yeah. It's like you're just a guide. Yeah, yeah. Just like catching them if yeah. they fall and yeah. supporting them and mm -hmm. giving them endless inspiration and, and empowerment. Yeah. And now that's what you do. Yeah. Oh, Bray. Well done. Thank you.